Welcome to the DIY3DTech.com channel. Welcome to this edition of DIY3DTech.com. In this episode, we're going to take a look at this. What is this, you might ask? Well, this is an experiment. So this is my, my first generation Octopi Fabricator Mini Stand. So I, I have to admit, though, this is first generation. Since I started this printing, which this was a five or six hour print, I've actually since designed a modified version. However, the one thing that I did want to show is um, uh, a time lapse of this being printed because one of the things that I was totally amazed is I told Kira to print with uh, supports and I expected supports to be formed in here however this whole, these whole beams, four of them were actually just printed in midair so I actually am, I mean, I, I, I set it to print I left it for several hours expecting to come back and find um, supports in here and I didn't and it's printed but it is kind of wanky I don't know if you can see this pulling out from the bottom but I mean to print this type of bridging I'm totally shocked I printed this in PLA and uh, I'm a little bit surprised I'm going to use this as, as a mock-up this isn't going to be the end because actually what I ended up doing is I decided to take these out all together there's really no reason to have these um, in there and then I want to talk a little bit about uh, the design of this so um, and then I want to see how it fits because there's going to be a couple of different generations I'm thinking of actually putting the finished version of this up on uh, Shapeways so those that have a fabricator mini can actually get it um, you know because the print time on this uh, this you know printed at 0.3 layer height took around about six hours to print and there's you know, no way I'm going to try producing these and selling these, and so I think the Shapeway route is probably the best way to go uh, to put it out there. I'll also put it up on Thingiverse, so if you have a bigger printer and you have a fabricated mini, you can go ahead and print it yourself. I'm just thinking for those folks that, that don't. So, anyways, let's go watch the time lapse of this, and I'm sorry, the bed's going to move. Um, um, I kind of like the motion with the bed in it. It's sort of like riding a roller coaster, if you will, but anyways, I know some don't, so my apologies if, if you don't like that. Um, I am experimenting with some other time lapses with Octoprint, but that's another story. So let's go watch the time lapse of this and especially watch how these are printed. I think this would be rather interesting. And then we'll come back and then we'll talk about how this uh, kind of fits on it and then how it mounts the Raspberry Pi and, and all that kind of stuff. So time lapse. Now for a time lapse video. Ready, set. Let's go. So welcome back. So we've uh, now removed this from the bed and uh, kind of mocking up everything to see how everything works. 
And so far, actually, so good. Um, because the rough idea is that the Raspberry Pi sits down in here and bowls to this, and then the Fabricator Mini sits on top. Now, the one thing, as this was printing, and, and uh, again, it sort of amazed me that these things printed without supports. However, they are pretty crappy, if you ask me. They're kind of falling apart. Uh, but one of the things that I, that I realized as this thing was printing is I really don't need these. There's no reason to have these supports because what I what I did in essence is I took I just created a box, hollowed out the box, um, and then when I hollowed up hollowed out the box here, what I did is simply took and uh, created four um, 3.2 millimeter holes set them down four ways, set them in there, and then crossed it and cut out these top pieces. And then what I did is I cut holes in the side for this. And then when I got printing, I'm thinking, why do I really need the holes? If I have enough beef on these bottom supports and everything, I mean, this isn't very heavy. Uh, I mean, you don't need a lot of support. Um, you know, longitudinal support. I mean, I'm putting quite a bit of force, and you know, there, there's not a lot of movement. And when the, the printer sits in here, it locks it in. So, if I were to set the printer back on top of this, it locks in very nicely, and it's not going to go anywhere. And so, there's enough stanchion support here to hold it. So, in, in the next version I, that, that's printing right now, I knock these out totally um, and did away with it, and I think that'll be just fine. I'm printing it also the other one out of clear PET G. The other piece I did is I put rounded uh, pads on the outside here and uh, on the sides. And I did it rather than the corner. I did one, I, I started a version of the corner and I actually stopped the printing of it. it because it's not going to tip on the corner, it's going to tip going forward. And you can kind of see, well, it's kind of sticky on the bottom. However, that provides enough, enough, um, lateral resistance to stop it from tipping forward, backwards, or sideways, because it's not going to tip on an angle, so having more of the pad here uh, works out better. And then, then what I did is I just took uh, a Raspberry Pi pad and put it in the middle and put four struts, I think you can see in there, to hold it, so it uh, wasn't a big deal. And then I can just use screws to mount the Raspberry Pi. Since this, is, this was just a test, I'm not going to mount it. And then you can see it, it, uh, the stuff faces out the back, so the wires face out the back so I can run power in the sides and whatever cables through the holes in the side. So anyways, this was my first uh, attempt at sort of an octopi stand, if you will. So I looked at a couple different ways of doing it. I don't, don't think the heat's going to be a problem, uh, especially once these sides are removed because there's su such openness here and there's a pretty good separation and flow of air. Um, you know, because on, on the regular stand uh, that I printed out that, that, that Chuck Hellebuck came up with, I, I mean, I didn't have any issues with that at all. Um, and this was printed for hours. It gets a little warm, but I haven't haven't had a problem, so I'm not overly concerned. Now, I am going to order the heat sinks for this from Amazon and put the heat sinks on here just to, because they look cool and everything and just, you know, it's a nice addition. However, I think it'll be it'll work out pretty neat now. On the other version too, I did put mounting holes through these four feet. So, because what I may do is actually fabricate some sort of acrylic base, uh, either on the laser cutter or the CNC, and, and attach that base to the stand, you know, to further, you know, give it a you know a larger surface area and make it neater. Because one of the things I might do is actually incorporate a a spool stand in in that overall design or something just to make it cool because I want to have it a little bit portable so I could take it places and show it off and in that kind of stuff because I think just a it's, it's really cool and especially being clear you know you can kind of see inside and it's a little bit different than you know of course you know like with my um, uh, Wanho you can see inside it too but this just really looks cool the way it's structurally built that the structure is containing it and the stages are clear and so really cool. I am, I am, 
even though I'm still as envious of Angus over at Maker's Muse for the orange one, um, you know, Chuck's piece of having the clear, I think, was, was good guidance to follow because, uh, again, it makes it very easy to see things inside, and it's sort of intriguing when I have this printing on my desk and people look at it and go, wow, that's, that's pretty cool. And so, anyways, um, watch for the next video. I'll be putting out another video on the... the the second version of this, I'll also be throwing the second version up on Thingiverse. I'm not going to throw this one up on Thingiverse. Um, it's a good prototype, but that's all it is. Uh, so again, give it a thumbs up if you like this video. Um, also subscribe to the channel. A lot more coming on this. Um, in a couple weeks, I'll do uh, some more Octoprint videos, uh, some intermediate uh, ones I'm going to jump to. Uh, how to set some things up and that really having a lot a lot of fun with the octoprint more more fun than I thought I would so I've been having a good time so if you have any questions about octoprint or this design or future stuff hey just let me know in the comments below I'll respond and uh, if you have a specific request or want to see something also let me know down there otherwise net cheers and see you in the next video please click like below and subscribe to the channel to keep up to date on all of our projects.